One of the unfortunate side effects of falling in love with historical fashion is the tragic reality that after feasting thine eyes upon beautiful fabrics and laces, crisp, meticulous tailoring, and a masterful understanding of silhouette and proportion in a way that really flatters the human body, modern clothing can become a bit disappointing by comparison. So frustrated with the lack of exquisitely tailored Victorian waistcoats one day and sort of not really feeling like making an entirely new one from scratch myself, I descended into the realm of Depop. I ended up finding this little number. It is most definitely a modern waistcoat, but I quite fancied that nice wool tartan, which I figured under the right circumstances could end up reading suitably Victorian with a little bit of work. In addition to the modern cut, however, it is a man's waistcoat, so is cut slightly differently. It is also slightly too big for me and slightly too symmetrical for me. <laughs> Keep in mind throughout this process that everyone's body is vastly different beyond just the realm of standard sizing, but in regards to proportion and structure, I personally am working around some unique musculoskeletal deformities, so some of the alterations that I am making in this process will not be universal, in fact will probably not be common to most humans, but we will be discussing some essential features and proportions seen on 19th century waistcoats so that you can perhaps gain a little bit of an understanding of the differences between 19th century and modern waistcoats, and perhaps get a couple of ideas for alterations that you might want to make yourself. But first I know for a fact that you are procrastinating some chores right now, and I for one am here to enable that for 60 seconds longer whilst I tell you about our sponsor for this video, Blueland. Blueland offer a range of hand soaps and cleaning products sourced from people and planet-friendly ingredients. With no single-use plastics in any of its bottles, tablets, packaging, or shipping materials, it is an environmentally friendly alternative to harsh, plastic-filled traditional cleaners. And with tablets starting at just $2, that is a lot of savings adding up. I got the Clean Essentials Kit, which includes hand soap, bathroom, glass, and multi-surface cleaners, as well as all of the requisite tablets for making up your potions. No shaking, stirring, toiling, or troubling required. You can go forth and stock up on sustainable cleaning products for yourself, or gift them to family and friends this holiday season. Click the link in my description box for more information. And now, with clean surfaces, let us return to altering some waistcoats. So I have two immediate issues here that prevent this waistcoat from faking its way to Victorian. First, it's much too long for the period, which usually saw waistcoats stopping around high hip or waist height, and the arm size are far too low on me. I can conveniently solve both of these issues at once by simply raising the whole waistcoat and taking those inches out of the shoulder seams. I will probably also shorten this a bit later from the bottom, but for now we are just focusing on the seams. I'm also going to have to take some room out of the side seams just to help close up that arm eye a bit. I'm not going too hard on this since I'm also going to take a little bit of room out of the lower center back. I am sway backed, so this will just help the back of the waistcoat to sit more smoothly across the back. And finally, I'm just putting two darts at the center front to ensure that the front sit nice and flat with as little looseness at the front as possible, just as with the 19th century waistcoats. This is a bit tricky since we have two very long pocket slits in the way, but I think I can take out just enough to give the front some shape. I'm just first marking with chalk along my pins so that I can take these out and lie the pieces flat without losing my alteration intents. I should forewarn, this is quite a large surgery here. This is, you know, not a waistcoat that is very nearly slightly to fitting and just needs, you know, a couple of centimeters taken in at the side or maybe a dart added at the front, but it's like, it's, it is a man's waistcoat that is vastly like multiple sizes larger than me. So this requires significant surgery. And ultimately in a case like this, it is actually going to be easier to take apart the waistcoat pretty much almost entirely and just work from the raw pieces. This is going to be a significant alteration because this is going to require recutting the neckline here. This needs to have a dart, this, which means the lining has to have, oh my God, there's a little watch. This is um, the pocket that I stitched in as a, as a sample for my book. So this sadly will actually probably have to come out because there has to have a dart that goes in here. I am going to separate the lining from the front pieces just because there is such significant like structural alteration happening to the front pieces that I will need to repeat on the lining pieces. So that's all going to come out. Taking this apart is actually going to be a lot easier. So let us go do that. Mm -hmm. 
Once I've unpicked my pieces, I can go in and straighten up my lines on a nice flat surface. Okay, so I have finished marking out my alterations on this. This is the back panel, by the way. I've taken a little bit out of the center back. This is just a personal, my own spinal thing because my back does curve in a little bit. So this alteration has to be made. I'm taking down the shoulder up here. And so I've had to remark the neckline. I am also, of course, doing the shoulder alteration on the front piece, as well as adding the dart into the front here. So I have marked this, transferred this to the other one. What else has happened? Oh yes, and also we are doing, I think, quite substantial alterations to the side seam. I am, however, going to hold off on doing this just yet. I might actually put together the center back pieces and do up the darts and the shoulder seams up here and basically just have like a front to back waistcoat and then I might just put it back on and repin the side seams just to make absolutely sure just because when I went to go transfer the marks that I pinned onto the fabric this looks a little bit extreme to me I don't I don't I don't trust what I've done in the fitting so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the more straightforward alterations first and then I will go and just sort of check up on the final alteration bit so yes <laughs> I'm starting with my straightforward seams, the two darts at center front and the center back seam of both the back piece and the lining layer. Now that I've got all the other shaping seams done, I've just put it onto my dress form to check the placement of these side seams. I will unfortunately lose a bit of my pockets since they are quite long, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. At least I will still have pockets, and pockets which are still bigger than half of a finger joint, which is more than I can say for some of my clothing. Here's where we are so far. I've just pinned the side seams together, so it's not sewn quite yet, but I'm happy with the fit, so I can go ahead and do that now. I've just decided that I'm going to try and, probably not right now, once I get the side seams all sorted and everything is roughly put together, I am going to shorten this waistcoat just a bit because as you can see on this side, it is a bit longer and that is causing the waistcoat to read slightly more modern. As you can see, modern waistcoat, slightly more period waistcoat. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few of my little historical hacks into this. I think I have decided I'm going to put two stays just at the front at the darts here. That is something that was very commonly done in women's waistcoats, especially historically, just to straighten that front. Um, these waistcoats were worn over corsets, so you know, the, the front of the body was very flat like that anyway. But this is also a really good trick if you are intending to wear a waistcoat in modern circumstances with perhaps modern undergarments and you wanted to give a little bit of that corsety effect without actually putting on a corset underneath this. Just adding a couple of stays at the front here can help to give that nice smooth corsety effect 
without the actual corset underneath. So that's something I'm going to do. I also might add a little bit of front, front padding, I guess, just up here, which is also another very common historical technique to sort of round out the front, this sort of hollowy bit where the shoulder happens up here, just to give that a nice smooth rounded shape. So onward. Much boning sold in shops today already comes in casings, but I'm using a synthetic baleen which does not come in a casing. So it's still plastic, just like much boning is nowadays, but plastic that is meant to specifically mimic the properties of whalebone. This isn't strictly necessary, but it's just what I happen to have in my stash. I'm just making up my own casings for these by stitching two strips of quarter inch cotton tape together with a running stitch. The bones are stitched in along the dart seams with a cross stitch. This is often the stitch of choice for 19th century bones since it's quick, it allows for both sides to be stitched down in a single stitch, but it's also very secure since each stitch taken is a back stitch. Then after having cut out a rough front shoulder shape from some cotton batting, I'm just inserting that into the front of the waistcoat and securing it lightly with a quick pad stitch. Once my fronts are all prepped, I'm quickly taking a moment to stitch together these side seams of my lining pieces, which I had previously transferred my alteration onto. And then the lining is ready to be stitched in. I'm pinning it just across the neck edge and around the arm size, then top stitching these into place. I still want to mess with the bottom length of the waistcoat a bit, so I am going to leave that free for now. At the edge where the lining connects with the inner facing of the waistcoat front, I'm just securing this down with a whip stitch since it's now impossible for the machine to get here without stitching through to the front. It's fine, we all know I do not mind a good whip stitching project. And having determined the final length of the waistcoat, which is still admittedly a bit long for the Victorian period, but I was only willing to sacrifice so much pocket room, the new edges can be turned in and top stitched down just like the rest of the edges. And that's it! Those are all of the alterations that I made to this particular waistcoat. 
As I said, any alterations made on any garment for any particular body are going to be vastly different from person to person. So these are just the choices that I chose to make. There are also multiple ways to solve various issues. So I personally chose to take room out of the front in the form of darts, but that might not be something that you're into and therefore you might like to take some more room out of the back or out of the sides. It all just depends on your preferences, your proportions, your shape, etc. I am very much feeling some newsy vibes here apparently now with this finished waistcoat. I very much enjoy this piece, it is super comfy and I think will add a nice little historical flair to anything that I decide to put over under it. Under it, yes that's how waistcoats work. So anyway, I hope this perhaps inspired you to go forth and do some thrift flips, do some alterations, make them into the most perfect garments that fit your ultimate style very specifically, because there is nothing more magical than a garment that feels you, and that fits you, and that is you. <laughs> okay, let's not get too philosophical here. Anyway, I will see you next time. Goodbye.